Serpents, they dream. 
Hello everybody, I'm Justin Leary and we're back with coverage of the Fortnite tournament. We are back with our second Fortnite tournament of the year and I'm excited to be here, excited to see what happens. Uh, Mark Boyd won our first Fortnite tournament last, uh, last week and we're excited to see who comes out on top this time. Mike off. See players dropping all over. Some are just hopping out of the bus now. Some are landing. Some are still just getting on the bus. Mike on. All 
Alrighty. And we start. We see um, these guys are dropping in a pretty remote location, not a named location, trying to get some decent weapons and farm some materials to get started. And we see some... Um, My golf. Seems like we got some fighting going on up here. There's some people down below. They're watching it. It doesn't seem like they're going to third party, but they may. And it looks like they're moving in. We have uh, the gone. spawned moving in right now. Nice shot for 24. Nice shot for 27. Builds up. Moves inside. And gets the gets the knock. And he's down. But it looks like the spawned was able to finish him off. And he'll try and get the res here. Some early action here. Nice to see out of this Fortnite tournament. I'd like to see a little bit more building there. All right, we'll transition to somebody over in the grotto. Uh, he's working with uh, henchmen right now, uh, trying to grab uh, what seems to be Brutus's minigun. Um, I think that's what's there. A nice, there's a minigun right there. Um, each one of these places with henchmen has a legendary item. And these weapons are better than any other weapon you'll find of the same type of weapon. So, you know, you have Brutus's minigun and Sky's assault rifle, and they're just better than the other leg even legendary assault rifles that you'll find on the map. You just got to get yourself into the vault. Alrighty, and they got themselves in the vault, and they have some great loot there great way to start yourself off a lot of shield a lot of nice weapons and we've got some action here it seems to be a build fight of some sort and we may have been we may just be catching the end of it because it looks like they're trying to get a revive off but oh no i saw some gunshots right there pop some minis there try and get some shield and he's hit Trying to find out where that came from. Doesn't have a lot of materials to work with right now. I don't even know if he has one. He doesn't even have a build, it looks like. That looks like we'll switch over here. And we see some gunshots in the distance. And we'll see if he pushes. Uh, we see him rocking the new Travis Scott skin. That uh, just came out during the Travis Scott Fortnite event that we were talking about the last time we were on stream. Travis Scott did a virtual concert on Fortnite. I actually went uh, and checked it out. It was really cool. Uh, hit for 22 and he gets a knock. A great long range shot by the with the assault rifle there. But with the burst assault rifle, that is one of my probably one of my favorite weapons in this game, especially the higher level ones, the purple and uh, legendaries. I, I really like that weapon. More than the assault rifle. I like the three shot burst. Pushing in, trying to get that second before they uh, get off a res. And he does. He's glitching through a wall, an interesting one there. And see him use the new headbanger emote there after getting the two. He got the duo wipe there. And he's close to zone now in a nice position after getting, after picking up not only his materials, but theirs. And they have enemies on him again. Seems to be a pretty popular location where they're at right now. They've got another duo pushing them. Some nice building we're seeing there by his opponent. Some quick, quick reflexes there too. In the box. Just got out of being caught under the stairs. Misses the shotgun shot, but hits the second. Building up. Uses the box. Nice 90 there and gets the flick. A great shotgun flick there. All right. Footsteps under him after looting there. See, does have the blue SMG. Uh, one of the more underrated weapons, especially in a build fight, because you can spray with that thing pretty fast. And uh, try and get some quick, easy shots rather than having to have perfect accuracy. Oh, a nice, another nice flick there. Nice use of the wall uh, edits, and that's another kill there. A nice loadout there. Blue assault rifle, blue pump, 
blue SMG, some minis, and some med kits. Uh, that's a pretty good loadout, especially for a player who seems pretty good like him. All right, we'll transition over here down by the shark area, another place with some henchmen where you can grab a legendary weapon. Looks like they'll be loot in this area. And there's no boat here. Sometimes there is. I think they, another team may have stolen that boat. Now, pass on the legendary pistol. That one may be legendary, but it is still a pistol, so a lot of people tend to pass on it. We'll be seeing something over here. They're going to seem to be gliding into zone, trying to avoid that storm. As we saw in the last couple games that we've seen in the, the, the other tournament, that zone damage seemed to be pretty bad once you hit late game, and you don't want to take any damage, even early game. It's going to be a pain to deal with. Farming some materials and grabbing those unlooted chests. Trying to see if they can upgrade anything. He does have the legendary assault rifle and the purple heavy sniper. Two great weapons, but he is also dealing with the gray tactical shotgun right now. Or the gray pump as he just picked up. Um, he's not in great shape when he's looking at shotgun situation, especially for a close range battle. He's probably going to stay back and play a lot more conservative because if he gets pushed and somebody has a much better shotgun, he's in bad shape. Uh, that, but if he can, if he sticks with the legendary assault rifle and the, well, he dropped the sniper actually. So he's not actually going to use that. He's going to take the, uh, going to take the fish and, uh, I forget exactly what the name of it is, but it, it heals you a good amount when you use it. Oh no, he's going to use the grappler instead. Or not. He's going to use the fish and it looks like he'll throw that that way towards his teammate that's a new function they just added you can throw items across the map trying to uh get it to your teammates faster something i really like uh, i've been waiting for it for forever since i started playing this game i mean i'm no pro but i mean getting the ability to throw stuff to your enemies is great oh and he picks up the blue pump that was huge he needed that now his loadout looks a lot better A whole lot of action happening right now, but we're getting to the end of the first zone, it seems, and we're going to see a lot more action as this zone starts to close in on these players, forcing them to get closer and closer and see a lot more box action, hopefully. We might have a... No, it doesn't seem like a battle on top left. Oh, no, we do. We have action top left corner and and top right. Uh, it seems like we've got a build fight happening here. Ooh, accidentally shot at his teammate there. And nice kill there. Hard to see from that angle, but it looked like he just got the angle with the shotgun there. Ooh. That is a huge upgrade for him as he just picked up the legendary tactical. He went from the gray tack to the legendary tactical shotgun. A huge upgrade there. And it looks like he'll keep both. Uh, he's going to be rocking the green assault rifle, purple pistol, and two tactical shotguns. One legendary and one gray. It's a really interesting loadout. Something that I uh, usually don't see. Uh, 15 bandages. That's always smart. You know, if you don't have a med kit, grab as many bandages as you can, because they're common. They can get you up to 75% health, which is... It's not 100, obviously, but I mean, it's still good enough, and you're still going to get something. And we're going to see some action here. Uh, we got them firing at somebody in a glider, as they want to probably move towards Storm, take the shot, and try and get that really long-range snipe. But that's a tough shot to hit. Always got to grab those mats when you can. Uh, 
try and get yourself as close to 500 in each category as possible because when you run out of builds especially against these players that we've seen using box techniques and stuff like that you're done you you can't compete nice use of the grappler there to start fishing it's one of the things that uh oh we got some action here firing down a couple shots for 22 a nice nice couple of shots coming there A lot of long range. Uh, both teams are in danger of the storm. So we're going to see both of them moving towards storm as they look back and try and make sure that they're not getting hit from behind. And they're definitely going to have to move towards storm now. This is a second. This is second circle. So that damage up that damage gets upped. They should be fine, though. They do have three med kits on that guy, at least. The guy in front, at least, has three med kits, so he can drop them as needed for his teammate there. Just put himself on uh, auto run and just grab him. And he's not going to put himself on auto run. He's going to take some storm damage here. Not the best strategy, but he is going to fire. He'll get a hit on that glider. Knows that they're there now, though. If you're going to shoot at that glider, you gotta you got to really hit him. And there's the med kit drop, like I said. You gotta look out for your teammates. Make sure the guy behind you is gonna be able to make it too. Because in a duos tournament, 2v1 is very difficult because you can get surrounded pretty quick. Moving in towards Storm. Trying not to take much more damage. He's already down to 60 health and 50 shield. Still a long ways to go. Gotta get himself down that hill. A rough road for him. Nice use of the med kit there. Try and save himself a little bit. He'll take a little bit of damage there. Seems like he took a little bit of fall damage. And we'll transition again. Nope. Seems like we got a fight here. Got the high ground here. Oh, we got somebody building up next to him. There's a duo there. One of them's got the minigun there. We'll probably get to see a nice use of that. Just trying to spray and pray almost. And this is uh, this is Mark Boyd, I'm almost positive, the kid who won the last Fortnite tournament. So we got to keep an eye on him throughout the tournament uh, and see if he can go back to back. Put himself in the box. Looks like they're going to try and force them to push them. Because they, it seems like they may uh, know that they have the advantage build-wise. Alrighty, and we see here, uh, this is actually the spectator screen. The streamer himself was actually killed and is spectating his teammate now playing a 2v1, trying to avoid being seen by these other teammates by hiding in the corn. And there's a build down. That's going to blow his cover. See if they noticed him. They did, and he is down. They'll place 23rd. They were eliminated by Q Love.
see him peek again, but just not really doing anything sitting in this box, just kind of waiting and trying to stay very on the very inside of the circle, just trying to stay in there. It looks like he'll move out of there for now. Looks like we'll see a push here from Void. And he's, he's lasered there. Got to keep an eye on his back there. Make sure he doesn't get knocked out. Nice edits there. Quick building. I like it. Take a quick shot, but won't get anything, it seems. Use the pyramid peak. Taking a look at these structures, just trying to figure out, you know, what he wants to do here. Try and strategize this. But it seems he's being pushed. Oh, a great shot! What a quick snipe there! I like to see it! A great shot by Just Fold. 30-20. Some really nice assault rifle aim there. You know, force him to use some of their meds, and he's forced to use a little bit of his, but his aim has been on point today. We saw him having trouble with those snipes in the last tournament. He may have aim he might have his aim a little bit better today. Gets rid of the tree to get rid of the uh, vision obstruction there. And he will continue to push this team coming out of the storm. So they're in position and he gets the knock. A nice play there. Shoots him out of the air. That's tough to do, especially with something like an assault rifle. You know, you don't have just one nice shot. You've got a couple shots that you need to aim. He may have been lower on health, which is why the assault rifle was the smart move there. And we will see here, um, shooting down on top of the enemy here, they have the high ground. Nice position to be in, especially in a duos area, where you can have one guy hitting the wall and another guy waiting to, you know... Get the shot right after that wall's broken, especially if you have somebody with a heavy sniper. I don't think that that's part of their strategy right now, but in a duos tournament, that's one of the best strategies from the high ground I've seen. And we're going to push here from Just Fold. Trying to work his way into a box here, trying to get on top of an enemy, it seems. See somebody gliding across. I'll take a couple shots. And as I said earlier, that's a tough shot to hit, especially with such a small, you know, aimer or whatever it's called. <laughs> Heading back to just fold. Trying to hit his snipes there. Another missed one. that snipe hits, that would have been a great shot. Hit him as he's coming down off the jump. And he's gonna break the wall down, make a new one. Trying to keep himself occupied here. Gonna get, uh... He's getting pushed, it seems. Gonna take a snipe there miss and he's going to shoot at the enemy structure here trying to break down the wall that was built trying to get a clean shot with that sniper it seems he does have the purple shotgun so he can push but it seems like he wants to stick with the sniper strategy and the long range shooting which has been working for him and obviously worked in the last one if he was good enough to win oh and he is hit from on top that's a rough place to be and now you're lower on health and you have to use some shields. You're stuck on the low ground, not where you want to be. A risky move by Boyd that probably didn't pay off as well as he was hoping. Oh, and he's going to push him. And a great play there. 
Now I see what he was doing. <laughs> he may have been on the low ground, but he was working his way down to get inside that house and get that enemy, who was the only one left for his team. So that was just an insta-kill. You don't even have to worry about uh, knocking him. And we got to deal with some storm damage there. Not where exactly where you want to be, but I think a lot of people are going to be having trouble trying to stay out of the storm. A nice knock there. Trying to get the other guy coming out of the storm as well, and he gets both of them. A great play there. I don't. I don't know why he's more. I don't know why he's more aggressive, but he seems to be aggressive. He seems to be playing really, really well. I like him. I like his play a lot. All right, and we're gonna see a push here. Another, another build battle here. See him dropping him some, uh, some minis there, trying to re, trying to reheal. Some nice edits here. Working on uh, building his way out of this. Pushing down towards the barn. He's going to try and take the wall, but he's shot from on top. Tried to take the wall from him, but tr tried to get him from on top. The guy came up and got him from the top. We see a supply drop to the left. Are we going to see them try and go for that? I don't think it's smart right now, especially with the health situation that they're in. They're being pushed. He can't use those minis in time because he keeps getting pushed too fast. And he's able to get the minis off. Trying to get himself to at least a decent amount of health before trying to get into a fight. Especially with players that are this good that we're seeing. It's not smart to go in on low health. And you see that there as he gets lasered. And <laughs> we're going to see more from Just Fold. As he's going to continue to just destroy the competition. As we see Just Fold take out our other streamer. But he goes down. And he must have been lasered or something. Oh, and they're being pushed. And Just Fold was eliminated by Anonymous. We don't know who this is, I guess. See him build in here, down to the final seven players, which is basically three squads, maybe four, maybe depending on how many, you know, duos and singles are left in the tournament. Nice use of the minigun here, trying to steal that wall, or at least just spray through the fact that he has to keep building after, and he's going to get the spray off! And that is the win!
Alrighty, and we are back for game two of this Fortnite tournament. So we'll see people start to jump off the bus, trying to get those hot spots and those legendary weapons off the start. And we will transition to the spawn plan here. As it looks like they're I'll going to land another unnamed no, location just outside of Salty Bathroom Springs. No they're going to hit salty. that house. They don't seem to be landing those big name locations. 
think they want to try and get their weapons yeah, yeah, and get out point. as quickly as possible and try and stay alive and get right, those yeah. placement points rather than the kill points because they are the kill points are worth more but if you're not one of the better players focusing on placement is yeah, not a bad idea because you still get lands, points for it i'll be able to hear, i'll be able to see them wait it's it spawned in front of you see him looting here just trying to grab as much as he can the chest and he will get a green assault rifle out of there <laughs> Probably one of the so most common things I find in the chest, which is green what? assault rifles over and over again. Second chest from this house and green burst. Pretty much the same thing, just okay. shoots burst shots and he There's will so leave the uh, oh bandage bazooka behind to stick with decoys. Drink that, drink that small he will throw small a ship. bunch of them that way. He may have seen an enemy or something. No, he looks like he may just be getting rid of them and picking up the, ba the uh, bazooka. Bandage That's bazooka so is one much. of my favorite things in this game because uh, you can you can uh, just shoot yourself down and try and get some more health. Just shoot it at yourself and get more health. It's one of the nicer things that they've added to this game. I really like that grab another chest it seems like him and his teammate aren't playing together as much right. uh maybe just for oh, looting okay, but I towards late game i would probably want to get nearer to your duo right. as, as i said last time playing a 2v1 no, is not a great strategy and Girl, not something you, you want to be involved in it looks like he's debating right, keeping the minis or the bazooka there's no way they push us and he's gonna take the bandage bazooka as he'll stick with the green assault rifle, the gray tack. And it looks like he's going to get pushed here. Um, probably looking for his duo right about now. Don't know where he's at. But we'll see what he does in this situation. He may just up and run away. And it looks like he will. As his duo is right there. They're trying to get out of there as quickly as possible. And here we are. Winners of the last round, Just Fold and his duo here are going to already be on the board. Nice shot there using the edits in the wall and another one. And he'll get the duo wipe there, it seems, because we saw him get another one earlier. And he'll emote around. Back to the spawn team here. And oh, and he's knocked after he got a couple nice shots in there, but just got rocked. And he's eliminated by T dubs. So the spawn is either going to have to basically ignore him or get his reboot card in about 75 seconds. Now, we didn't have to see reboot cards in the last game, but um, oh, and they're eliminated. So they can't get the reboot card there. But in the last game, we didn't have to see reboot cards. For those of you who don't know what a reboot card is, it's you can pick it up and take it to certain locations, which are look like big white vans, and you can take it to that van and revive your teammate from complete death rather than just being knocked down on the ground. Uh, used to be when you were knocked down, you were just knocked down for good. And he'll miss a snipe there. But he'll hit him with the assault rifle for 21. Taking some long range shots, but swimming across the lake here. Trying not to take damage. As he is completely unprotected besides jumping up and down in that lake. I think he's going to ignore the guy at the other side of the lake that he was just shooting at. And he's kind of done with him there, it seems. Got some action here. Building across, trying to push on these people. Stay on the aggressive. And a couple nice shots there. We saw one of those numbers is a white number as he takes a little bit of fall damage. And that white number means that he has no more shield left. He may have gotten some more during that period of time when there was no shooting. But um, hopefully they can see some more action here. I want to see them push him and see what happens.
Seems like they're waiting on them to come to them. Kind of is a big game of chicken right now. Who's going to push first? Hitting that wall, trying to just get a quick peek at what the enemy's doing here. Honestly, they may not even be there anymore. They may have left. Oh, and there we go. Now we got some action here. Seems like they're going to push them, but they are on the low ground, which is a tough place to be, especially when a structure that high. And they get the first knock. A nice play. And he will heal up from under because they... They can't hit them from all the way up top if they're under their own structure. Looks like he'll try and get the, get the med kit off here. Full 10 seconds. Guy on top of him seems to be pushing here. He'll build back up. And taking some fire here. Using his builds. He's running out of builds here. Low on metal, it seems, and has no more stone or wood. So he's got to be careful with what he does. Oh, and he's lasered. Popping those minis, trying to stay alive here in this fight. I can't tell if he was third party there. It looked like the shots were coming from the left, but I may be wrong. Sees the footsteps under him. And he's shot again. And that structure comes crashing down as they took out the bottom of it. Making this a lot harder. And he is lasered. Tyler L1L with the elimination. And a missed snipe there again. These long range snipes are incredibly hard. But when you hit them, they are very satisfying. See, so just fold, you know, working his way across the bridge here, trying to get himself towards zone. One of the better players, he can play towards the middle of the zone and doesn't have to stick to the outs. Uh, we see that's a strategy of a lot of the players that are going for placement. They'll stick towards the outskirts of the zone so that they don't have to deal with everybody in the middle. All the better players go to the middle and try and get a, get the most eliminations. Grabbing that wood. He's only got about 300 right now. Still has room for 200 more. And he'll get to that supply drop first. Build around for safety. Quick builds there. And he'll grab the purple pump shotgun. A nice pick up there. And he'll throw down some decoys to throw off the enemies there. They don't know who to shoot at. Decoys throw down fake uh, people. So the enemy thinks that it's you and shoots at it, but it's just a ghost, basically. And it knocks out that the decoy does get knocked out. And you'll see that it's a decoy that you just killed rather than the actual player. He's down in the build battle here. Teammate goes out, but apparently gets shotgunned right there, and they go down. Just fold using the pyramid peak technique again. You see him use that a lot, trying to scope out where the enemies are going to be.
like they're gonna make their way farther from the zone a little bit looks like they're working their way around before they get in they still have a minute to a minute 10 to get themselves all the way into the circle and they may head towards the exit of Ple pleasant park trying to grab whoever's coming out of pleasant park towards zone and get them quickly a miss snipe but they did let them know that they're there so we will see some action here Legendary Sniper there. Definitely could be used to his advantage from attacking from far. And the rocket launcher on the wooden structure. I love to see that. One of the best things to use, and especially when you're far away from the big structures, use the rocket launcher and just take it out. And he lasers them. And he gets the knock, and his teammate finishes off the duo. As they will have to, uh, you know, get themselves into zone here. As I said before, they did have a minute, but when you're in a fight, that minute goes by faster than anybody would expect. Seems like they're getting shot at from behind here, from other stragglers of the zone. Just trying to, you know, work themselves up. Seems like they're going to use the bridge to their advantage and try and take the high ground from the bridge. As the... Uh, the other players are coming out of zone there. They may push them or they may try and, you know, move towards the next zone circle and stay away from that fight. But it looks like they're definitely going to push here. One falls down into the ravine there. Just out of sniper reach. My golf. They're pushing them here, it looks like. These are different enemies from before, but push is on, it seems. And they will try and be aggressive towards these guys and try and get some eliminations here. So he just fold taking some snipes in here. Another heavy sniper for him. Keeps finding those. Saw an enemy there, but the enemy disappeared behind the cliff, just out of reach. So he fires into the field, trying to see if there's anybody hiding in there. They seem to think that there definitely is, because they're firing rockets in there. And a storm coming in towards that area, I wouldn't be surprised if there is somebody hiding in that cornfield. And it seems like they'll move into the cornfield again, trying to avoid the shots, but they have the high ground, which does make this a lot harder for them to stay avoided, because they can just fire down into that field and try and just find them in there by that, that way. Because you see those damage markers go off, and you know exactly where they are. See, like that. They get him for 33, and he knows that they're right in that little patch. Mike on. They will jump pad away here. Trying to move away towards a different area. Not trying to waste all their ammo on those guys just running around in the, in the, the cornfields. Especially not trying to waste your rockets there. Trying to break apart all the corn. Got some ammo out of that chest, but you don't want that green pistol right now. You want something a little bit better. 
but it's going to be hard to find a weapon that he's going to take right now. So he has three purple weapons. Sniper, shotgun, and an assault rifle, all purple. He has to find anything legendary for him to take it. some edits here from just fold and it seems like he's seen an enemy there because he's marking him where to shoot that uh rocket launcher at and break some structures down see that uh just fold seems to be carrying more of the skill weapons and the shield while his teammate is carrying the minigun and the rocket launcher the bigger more structure destroyers so you know each each player uh, has a serious role on the team here. Build battle here, it seems. We got some nice edits coming from Just Fold here as he's building his way up into a structure, and he'll pop some shield here, trying to get himself back to full health, but he is being shot at. And you can't just sit still in a box, or you're going to get lasered by these players. Uh, to anyone wondering, this is the second game out of four that we will be seeing in this tournament here. As we see Mark Boyd take a couple nice shots there, but no real hits there. Going to fire into that There. And he got lasered there. There was an opening in his structure, and somebody took advantage of that one. Rookie mistake there from uh, Just Fold. Something we haven't seen a lot of in this tournament. He's been pretty consistent in his gameplay. The duo throwing, uh, throwing some health at him there, trying to get him back up to about full. It's at 198 health right now, so he should be fine. And just barely avoiding the storm. And he jumps down into the box and gets the elimination. A nice play there from Boyd, or just full old. And he takes some storm damage, but uh, he does get the um he does get the elimination there and he'll have to revive his teammate after he went down as well and the storm is on them so they gotta move quickly try and get out of there because that storm damage at this point in the game is just deadly they jump up and oh and he is eliminated by anonymous using the uh sky's assault rifle there looks like he went to the uh Took out all the henchmen and grabbed that legendary assault rifle. The legendary assault rifle and the legendary grappler. An awesome loadout there.
play there. Keeping the game moving here. He will keep pushing, trying to keep himself out of the storm. Um, let me just...
All righty, and we are back for the third game of this four-game Fortnite tournament. As I'm sorry that we cut out last game, but the winners of the last game were Code CP Colin Three and Missed at Shark. And we will be seeing some landing here as somebody looks like they'll be landing towards Salty Springs. Or Path. And uh, we'll see those winners missed at Shark in Code CP Colin Three landing past Salty Springs towards Pleasant Park here. This is usually a pretty highly populated area that we see people landing. Um, a lot of this is one of my favorite places to land as well. A lot of good loot here, and you can get some quick and easy kills as well. And we're gonna see uh, him head towards the gas station and grab that green, that blue tactical shotgun on top. A great find early in the game. And try and get in this house and grab that chest in the doghouse there. If you can get in there and just try and grab a quick kill or two here, depending on if people landed here with them, that'd be awesome. Already got a decent load out here. He'll build up into this house here. Grab that chest. Nice green burst. Gonna you know, not take a couple shots there. Thought he might take a couple shots there and try and get a quick kill. Didn't really see anybody. He's going to leave the green... Uh, uh, he's going to leave the blue tack for the blue pump. And we'll see Pat Seckinger here using the box hiding strategy. Of course. Uh, a lot more of a meme strategy than anything else here. As he is hiding in the box and trying to... This is used for tricking other players that you're a box and not a player. As you crouch down, you go to ground level. But um, when you're walking around and building and grabbing things, it's a lot harder to convince players that you're not a real player. See him walking around towards... And he's going to break out of that box, but... Go back in. Really committed to this box bit here. Um, when I'm messing around, I love messing around with the box strategy, but in a competitive game like this, I'm surprised he broke it. And he's done with that strategy. He's trying to, you know, grab a quick kill or so. See the spawn here. Trying to make his way towards the high ground. As his duo, uh, as his duo was already done, he can't be as strategic with uh, building and stuff like that. And he's going to escape, but he's going to escape right into some enemy fire as they knew exactly where he, he was going to end up. Really and, um, trying to just heal up a little bit here. And he's going to get shot a few times. And I think there was somebody behind him. And we'll see the former winners, Mist at Shark and Code CP Colin 3, get a nice elimination there as they take out the spawned and they get that duo done. Looks like 
They'll be leaving Pleasant Park here, trying to, you know, move on, try and get some other eliminations somewhere. They're definitely focused on the elimination points, as they're some of the better players in this tournament, as we can see. It's a much different environment from the first tournament, because the first tournament was a solos tournament. So you saw players like even these two going up against each other. Now they're working together. So you see some of the better players in this tournament get a chance to and really start to dominate these uh, other duos of players that have kind of teamed up with just their friends. Grabbing that wood, always nice to farm and make sure you got enough materials. Looks like we've got some action here. Footsteps in front of him. Who oh, tried to break down that tree, but accidentally broke down his own structure. Really playing chicken here. Sue's going to pop up first. And they're going to push. Trying to, you know, get aggressive with them and force him down into a hole here. Some nice spraying there as he takes some real heavy damage. Takes out the knocked player. And he will move back into the box and use a med kit there. To heal up himself. His duo continues to fight and his duo goes down. We do see his duo down here, so it's a 1v1 here. Trying to keep the high ground here and keep that wall to his advantage, because if he can keep it, if he can hold onto that wall, he's got a much better chance. But they spray through that wall, and he is on very low health, and he goes down! As we switch to a different battle, we have uh, a nice battle going on here. Taking out, he's going to shoot at the uh, glider back there. It seems like they just got another nice elimination. Looks like we were just catching the end of that one. Oh, and that is the legendary drum gun. One of the most overpowered weapons in the game. And giving it to a player here with this, who had won the last game and playing really well. Uh, that's going to make this very tough on the other teams. He'll land down at Risky Reels. We'll transition to a player using the hay bales to hide. Something they've added recently is uh, different garbage dumpsters and hay bales and stuff like that you can use to hide in. We saw the spawn using the box strategy earlier where you hide in the box and can trick other players that you're not there. See him using the hay bale strategy here as his duo does seem to be knocked. So he doesn't want to alert the other players that he's there. Trying to get as many points for placement as a 1v2 is pretty difficult. We'll switch to uh, just fold here. Just uh, mining those materials, trying to keep as many mats in your, uh, trying to keep as many mats on you as possible. Just the best strategy to win. It's the second you run out of mats, you're done. Take another long snipe. It looks like. He won't hit that one. And he broke his wall by accident while trying to mine that rock. And he will um, he'll take some damage there. Not what he was looking to do. And they'll have to use some shots on the bandage bazooka earlier than probably expected. A rough break there. 
Another rookie mistake. Gotta build back. He will use the jump pad to new tried to use the jump pad to get out of there, but uh the wall on top actually forced him right back down to the ground. And had to break that wall before getting out of there. Nice play by Just Fold to get himself out of there. Moving away from the storm though, something you gotta watch for when that storm really starts moving in. Grabs that big shield there, and he'll pop one of those. And we'll head back to uh, miss that shark. An in intense battle, it seems here. As they seem to be uh, sitting in the one-by-one -one here, trying to gain position and the advantage here. But the storm is moving in fast, and it is something that they're going to need to watch if they don't want to lose here. And they're taking the battle to them in the storm, trying to get this wrapped up as quickly as possible, popping the mini shield. Uh, not going to do as much here in the storm because storm only does damage to your health and not your uh, shields. But never hurts to uh, shield up, especially when you got players coming out of the storm with you, so that you don't have to um, get knocked as quickly. Loot them real fast and get out of there is their strategy. You know, no time to swap where your weapons are in your inventory or any of that stuff. They've got to move as quickly as possible. They do have a lot of meds, though. They do have three med kits, which will prove to be very helpful for them, especially if this storm continues to move. And I think they've uh, realized that they have the three med kits, so they're not really as worried as at uh, to get there as quickly as possible. They seem to be scouting out locations here too, making sure that there's nobody here. And Just Fold is in another battle in the storm as well. I said earlier that he might want to watch that storm, and clearly he did not because he's stuck in it right now in a, in a battle where he is stuck on the ground, almost having to panic build on top of himself to keep himself from getting shot at by the enemy while trying to shield up. Doesn't seem to be too worried about getting to the storm right now. A little bit more worried about getting rid of that enemy. And honestly, in the position that he's in, it's probably the smartest move. As his duo gets rid of him, and he will have to eat those floppers as quickly as possible. Uh, those are some of the better healing items in the game right now. They are quick, and they, uh, they heal you quick, and they heal you 75 health pretty much. It's either 75 or 50, I can't 100% remember. And this is a new strategy now that you can throw items. Uh, what you do is you throw an item forward and pick up the other the the item that just barely doesn't fit in your inventory. Uh, you see it a lot with um, more pro players. And we see that he's been doing, that he's one of the better players in this tournament. So clearly he's going to use some pro strategies. He'll miss that snipe again. He's carrying this, this uh, heavy sniper and taking some long-range snipes with it, but he's not hitting all of them. And we will change back here to a fight in a large structure here, and we see Code CP Column 3 goes down, and... It doesn't seem like Mist at Shark is really going to try and go get that reboot card. Seems like he's more focused on staying alive here and trying to get a couple more eliminations and keep that placement points up. They did just win the last game, and he has a good loadout. So I'm sure he isn't. It's more of a strategic move as more than anything right now. And you see the damage that that drum gun does off the bat. Some very, If you have the aim, that drum gun is very deadly. 
a nice spray there, and he will knock the one guy. He is in the storm, something to watch. He gets the wipe, and he's going to use the jump pad that was there already to get himself out of there and towards uh, towards a Pleasant Park, it seems. Another nice elimination there. He doesn't even need his duo right now. He is playing really well. In a battle here, just fold. Looking for that snipe in the top right hand corner where that wall is not there. You can use the rocket launcher and break it out. See if there's anybody in there that they can scare out and try and push on. Alrighty, and we are down to our top 10 players, it looks like, right now. And see them try and... We'll see them emoting here, as they probably realize they're on stream. And have decided to emote. Using one of my favorite skins in the game. Trying to look for those long-range shots with the... Um, Assault Rifle. As it looks like they're probably going to move towards that Supply Drop there. And uh, at this point in the game, with how small of a map is left, that Supply Drop is probably going to be contested. So we may see some action here. They move their way towards it. It would be smart to build around it here. And we do see that he will get... A legendary tactical shotgun there. A nice upgrade. I mean, he did already have the purple one, but always nice to get a legendary weapon. And there's another supply drop landing there soon, so they may camp out and wait for that one as well. A decent strategy here. Trying to get as best a loadout as possible. Grab some mats, grab some ammo. Those, uh, those supply drops are so helpful which is why they're always such a highly contested area looks like they're going to sit there and wait for that supply drop to fall down eventually you can shoot them out of the sky but this late in the game it's a tough decision to do that because you do give up your location very easily. No need to shoot it down. He grabs the supply drop. Then he'll leave the weapon there as he wants to stick with the uh, blue assault rifle. They will jump pad out of there, trying to keep themselves out of the storm, but also trying to push some enemies and try and get some kills here. As we see Mist at Shark again, playing without his duo here after they won the last round. Can he carry his duo to a second win in this tournament, or will he go down? Now, even if he does go, even if he does go down, he is top 12 right now. 
And at this point, you do have some pretty decent placement, pretty decent placement points, and he is playing very well and finishing off those players as quickly as possible and getting those eliminations. And he just got another legendary weapon on top of the drum gun. He grabs the legendary uh, tactical shotgun and, of course, hits us with the jaywalk. We see Just Fold here uh, having just gotten that duo wipe as I say that. He is being pushed and he's down. Missed that shark with another elimination as he hits us with the jaywalk again. He is really playing well and proving to be one of the best players we see in this tournament, if not the best. I'm here having the high ground at what looks like an opponent building towards the bottom of their structure. It's like they'll edit and they do hear some gunshots and some footsteps nearby. They seem to be in the middle of everything. As you can see, those footsteps circling. And on the map, they are in the middle. They are towards the middle, trying to stay out of zone for as long as possible. But everything, it's just inevitable at some points. And it's hard to uh, stay out of that storm, especially late game when the circle is just so small. And they're going to drop down and push. But he got lasered, takes a lot of fall damage, and he goes down. Missed that shark again with his 12th elimination of this match. He is really playing awesome today. Even without his duo, he is finding a way to absolutely dominate the competition. I love what I'm seeing out of him today. As he doesn't have the high ground here, and he is dealing with zone, it might be tough. But he got him on the run, and that is another elimination. That's number 13. The rocket launcher coming down from the top. It looks like he's got a duo left, and that is all. He gets one elimination. He probably is going to want to go for the finish. He does. He gets the finish. And it looks like he's going to push the second guy. And he got it! A nice shotgun flick there. And missed that shark. Got a 15 elimination win there without a duo. Very impressive.
for just a moment. And welcome back to the fourth and final game of the esports, La, uh, the LaSalle esports Fortnite tournament. Uh, excited to see what happens here in this uh, final game. We've seen one win by Just Fold and his duo, and then we've seen a win by uh, the person on stream right now, uh, Mist at Shark and Code CP Column 3. In the last game, Mist at Shark finished with a 15 kill solo duo win. He was the only person that he was, uh, Code CP Column 3 went down early. And Mist at Shark found a way to finish the rest of the game by himself and get a win. Very impressive performance. And as they land, they got lucky and found a Llama right off the start. That is awesome to find immediately as you can grab some really nice things out of there. They got a bandage bazooka, a bunch of materials, some shields, some ammo. Great way to start off for them. Gotta grab this chest and try and grab a gun as quickly as possible though. Because if you get that Llama and die immediately... You're just giving the other teams your stuff. Setting them up for the game rather than yourself. Landed at a pretty prominent location at Pleasant Park. Uh, seems to be a pretty common drop place for them. As the saw them drop their last game almost positive. Or it was at least the first or second. They dropped, the, dropped their once before. And I'm going to try and grab the chests in this house here. Uh, blue AR there. And instead of keeping the bandage bazooka, he will take the big shield and open up another slot in his inventory for something else. I think that's probably pretty smart because if he's going to want to keep the SMG, he's got to have room for the shotgun and some meds. Pick up the pump shotgun already with a decent loadout, if not pretty good loadout for him. Um, we saw him do some real damage with the shotgun last game. So if he can have a good uh, shotgun, I like what he can do. And we've already seen him. That's one elimination on the day. And he'll shake him down. And this should tell him where his uh, duo partner is right now. Should at least give him an idea. And he does, he gets the elimination of the duo, and he's already up two kills. Pick up the heavy sniper. You've seen his aim be pretty good. I haven't seen him use a sniper all that much so far. So it should be interesting to see what he does with that. And it looks like him and uh, CP Colin 3 may be raiding this, um, this area right here to try and get the legendary weapon that's down here. Shake down the henchman, try and get a location of where the other ones are. He does. Goes after that one and knocks him. Carry him and use his ID to open up this chest here. And grab some great loot out of that one. My god. They are really set for this game. The loot that they the the loadout that they have right now. Oh, and they've they found the spawn dumb almost positive. That's who that is. Oh, no, that's his duo's partner. And there's the spawn. Trying to fight back. Uh, we saw them use the box strategy again, and down they go. They take out Nikki Senoretta and Pat Seckinger as the spawn. And I don't remember Pat's name. Um, a great play there. They went with the box strategy again. They seem to not be taking this as seriously as some of these other players as they keep hiding in boxes rather than, you know, trying to push their opponents. And, oh, that is a lot of damage dealt there as uh, as Mist at Shark is being sprayed down right now. And he's down! Mist at Shark, after his amazing game last time, is down. They don't use the finish, so it is up to code CP Colin 3 to get that play off. Transition over here. Nice play there. 
trying to get out of there with those legendary weapons. They now have the legendary burst assault, but legendary burst assault rifle, and the legendary sniper, along with a rocket launcher and a bunch of mini shield. A great load out there. I really like what I'm seeing there. I would like to see a shotgun though. At some point, they may want to drop half their minis or give it to their duos partner and try and grab a shotgun. Because as we see in those build battles, the most uh, used weapon up close is obviously the shotgun. And um, if you can get a good one, especially in those build battles, we saw what happened last game where uh, Mist at Shark actually went pretty crazy and dropped 15 kills and a lot of them were close range shotgun pushes. Uh, it's a very nice strategy to use, especially in these competitive games where you need to get as much damage in as quickly as possible. If you see an enemy up there, he'll probably push. He does have the sniper. Gonna mark him in that bush right there. Looks like he's gonna build up and try and get a visual on where the enemy is exactly. Oh, what a blind shot! That was crazy! 155 damage. Just shot blindly into a bush, it seemed. Nice build there to stop it. Another hit for 22. Looks like he, you know, used some shield before uh, the second shot came by. He's hit for about 50. Rocket launcher shot to get themselves in there. Took out one of them. Not too worried about grabbing that XP. Nope, not too worried about grabbing that XP coin. More worried about getting those eliminations. And we're back here. Low ground here, trying to work his way out, and he gets caught in the box, and he goes and he goes down, and his duo has a chance to resurrect him, but and there is the finish there, as he has to hope that his duo can pick him up. Just harvesting some materials here, working his way towards Salty Springs. Looks like you're going to stay just outside of Salty Springs and hit this house right here. Usually has some decent loot. We will transition over here. And we will see them heading towards Sweaty Sands. And it looks like there's probably some enemies up ahead as we see his duo gliding around. And yep, there are. 
He takes a sniper shot and misses from long range. Trying to uh, work his way over there while still trying to take some shots. Good strategy there, trying to use that legendary sniper to his advantage. A great dodge by the opponent there as he jumps over the sniper shot. Probably unintentional because it's hard to dodge those intentionally and guess when they're going to come. But nonetheless, it looked really cool. And tries to lead him, but doesn't get it 100% there. He will use the glider, try and get himself... Looks like he's going to back himself away a bit. And continue to use that sniper. Or he will... Yeah, it seems like he's going to use a sniper. His duo just went down. So it's going to be hard for him to... Uh, fight a 2v1 in a build battle. So, we've seen it done earlier this tournament, but it's a very tough decision to make right now. Do you try and go push for your teammate's reboot card to get him back in the game, or do you just get out of there and take the placement points? Seems right now it's looking like he's going to try and grab that reboot card, but the other team is there waiting for him, so he's going to need to be careful. He only has the green tactical shotgun. But he does have the rocket launcher. Close battles, the rocket launcher is hard to use. But if you can get it off without damaging yourself, it's a very skillful and damaging play. In the box, gets the high ground. And he's got to reload the rocket launcher. Probably something he should have done earlier. A rough take there. Lost him a shot. And he goes down and uses the umbrella to not take any fall damage as he bounces off of that. And he is there. Too late for the reboot card. But he does pick up the legendary grappler. There's only one of those in the game. So it's very nice to have. It has unlimited grapples and you can move yourself across the map with ease. Almost like having a vehicle right now. It's a great way to get yourself out of storm too. We've seen a lot of these players deal with storm damage. In, because they're stuck in fights. And we'll see it here right now as he will use it to get himself away from the storm. Just trying to keep himself moving towards the circle so he doesn't have to deal with the damage that the storm does. And there he may have taken 10 or 20 damage trying to get out of that storm on a regular basis. Especially with how high up he was and whatnot. But he was able to get himself out of there using the grappler and move himself across the map taking no damage at all. That's why that is one of the best weapons in the game. He used to be in the game as a purple weapon, and they had 10 grapples apiece, and there were a lot more of them on the map. But now they made one with unlimited um, unlimited shots, and it is really hard to get. And when you do have it, it's a game changer for your strategy. It especially helps him now because he's by himself. So trying to escape situations may be a lot more in the strategy than having to push. So using that grappler to keep the placement points up will be very prevalent in the strategy, I feel like. Something I just noticed about his loadout too, we've seen him use the sniper a lot in this tournament, but it seems like he's dropped the sniper, and he'll be sticking with just a basic assault rifle and shotgun tandem right now. He has the legendary assault rifle, a purple tactical shotgun, and the grappler and some uh, meds with uh, six minis and four gr and four flap uh, floppers. Interesting loadout, something we haven't seen from him a lot in this tournament. But I think the loss of a duo's partner kind of simplified his strategy to just do what I need to do and get placement points. As we see there, he goes down and it is eliminated by easy claps. And it's going to be tough. He's got a duo's partner there that we're, that we're um, spectating right now. But as he's trying to heal, Easy Claps uh, takes him out with a shotgun blast. Probably should have a little bit better communication knowing that he's coming after, the, after his death. Uh, rough take there.
And we will see him emote here as he is healing up and just kind of camping out, waiting for that supply drop to fall. He did lose his duo's partner earlier, if you have not seen that yet and you just joined us. So he is down to just himself. So we'll see him probably play a lot more of a conservative strategy here and kind of worry about himself and rather and just st keeping himself alive rather than going for a lot of kills. Ooh, a nice shot for 57 there. It looks like he's going to try and push these people here, but he gets lasered, and he is down to 52 health. A rough place to be in here. And he's probably going to use the grappler to get himself out of this situation right now and avoid the enemies. So he needs to keep himself alive if he wants to try and at least get some decent placement points and let alone a win. Here in Weeping Woods, there's a lot of uh, trees and structures and stuff like that to hide from. So this is a good place for him to be, trying to stay away from the enemies. But he did just find another duo when they lasered him and took out a good amount of health. Uh, it does have some footsteps behind him, so he has to worry about that. As he's trying to get away as quickly as possible, might want to use some angles here with this grappling, try and almost zigzag a little bit. Trying to avoid that enemy uh, push. And it seems like he's a little bit surrounded here. I don't like the situation for him. He has a great loadout with some really nice weapons. But at the same time, he's really in a tough place here with uh, his situation game-wise. If he had a duo, I'd like his spot. But having no duo, it's a little bit of a rough place. Because if you get into a 2v1, you're in a real tough spot trying to get rid of both of those guys by just yourself because they can surround you quickly and it's hard to take out two at once because you got to flick back and forth as they can just shoot straight ahead. See him take to the box strategy. We saw him use this a lot in the first tournament and a little bit more here. So he uses the pyramid peak and he's going to try and see what other players are looking by editing inside of a pyramid. This trick is you, you hit the edit button on a pyramid that's already built and you stick your head up and the top of the pyramid becomes transparent, and you can see through it. And we'll see him take out part of that structure there, trying to see if that'll do anything for his chances, as these people are in storm as he is in the middle of the zone right now. They're in pretty big danger of the storm, as we see them start to grapple away a little bit. And we see some footsteps forming towards them, so we may see a push He'll edit out down to our top eight players. He'll grapple away from there, trying to move his way towards a much safer location. Towards his last place, his last uh, little hut that he was hiding in. Seems like he's going to have a push here almost. That could be what that was. I thought I saw some gunshots. There are some gunshots in the distance as you can see, but they're probably not affecting him. You can see them so prevalently on his screen right now because the circle is just so small that everybody is so, so tightly bunched together. It's very hard to play a conservative strategy in a situation like this. And a nice strategy there is the storm just finishes on the edge of his build. 
Now he can't stay there for the next circle, but he's still got a solid 20 seconds before he has to move, and he'll move early. And it looks like he's going to try and push on some people here and try and gain a couple eliminations as he's already got some decent placement points, some pretty good placement points. So no reason not to try and get those eliminations with the very few players that are left. Has the high ground, looking around, trying to find where any of these enemies are. Got some building coming from the west as he is trying to just escape and keep himself alive, playing very conservatively. Taking the long-range shots where they come, but not pushing ahead. Because pushing ahead towards two players is a very difficult situation. As he's being pushed from the top, see some footsteps on top. He pops a mini. Great strategy there. Trying to keep as much health as he can. Using that grappler to get himself around the map as quickly as possible. Especially in a, salt, in a small circle, you can get yourself almost across half the map that's left inside the storm in almost just one grapple shot. He's being pushed from the left side here. He's going to grapple up to the top of that structure. A nice move there as he has the high ground right now. And he'll use the grapple to get to the other side. As I said, you can move very well in a small circle with that grappler. As he'll break the tree and try and get rid of that obstruction there. So he can try and get those long range shots rather than pushing with the, sh the shotgun it seems. It looks like he's going to push though. He's going to use that uh, assault rifle. Try and take the wall. Doesn't get it. And he'll move back out. He's in the storm, moving back in. And takes a little bit of fall damage. Not very helpful there. He'll grapple away after taking some shots. He's on very low health, down to 20 health. As he builds up, trying to find a place where he can heal up. But he's just under constant stress. And that is a second. He got all the way to second place, which was very, very impressive. But that is a win for an anonymous player. <laughs> whose username was not shared. Sorry for that. But uh, we're now going to go and tally up the results, and we'll be back to tell you who won the second Fortnite challenge.
Okay, and welcome back as we now have the results of the winners of the second annual LaSalle Esports Fortnite Tournament. And the winners are Code CP Colin 3, aka Colin Leary, and Mist at Shark, aka Jack McFadden. Congratulations, guys. Great play I saw to you guys. Great play by Jack McFadden with the 15 kills solo duo win.